Good afternoon. I'm Kevin Walker, Senior Vice President of Public Policy for the Overland Park Chamber of Commerce. With me today is Mark Hamill, a candidate for Johnson County Community College Board of Trustees. Today we're going to spend some time getting to know Mark and learn about his candidacy and the priorities he has if elected to the Board of Trustees. Mark, welcome and thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Let's start by having you take a few minutes and tell us about yourself and why you're running for the position. Sure. Um, my name is Mark Hamill again. Um, I'm a graduate from Johnson County Community College. Uh, my mom went there, my grandma went there. I hope my kids go there. I absolutely love that school. Um, while my time at Johnson County, I was actually a union carpenter for a few years and actually got to build a couple of buildings on that campus. And I'm um, really proud of the experience I've had there um, and my family go back, how far back that goes. Well, with that, uh, why don't we uh, turn our attention to some questions and okay. see uh, what you think. So what would be your top agenda priorities as a trustee if you uh, get elected? Sure. Um, we've got a few issues. Um, one of them is declining enrollment, and I'm sure a lot of you probably know that we've had declining enrollment for the last 10 years. Every single year has gone down. Last year we're expecting about a 3% decrease again this year, and we've got to figure out how to get those numbers back up. I have a few ideas on how to make that happen. Um, the other thing is the budget keeps going up every single year, and for the last 10 years it's gone up with an inverse relationship, which is completely unhealthy, and it's part of the reason our property taxes keep going up. And right now we have a spending problem going on up at Johnson County Community College where they're renovating spaces and renovating the exact same space in a very short time afterwards. we got to figure out to get that budget back under control. Uh, that's one second one. And third one right now, we need to focus on actually um, helping students actually learn the material they're supposed to learn and help them find the correct job afterwards or onto the next step in their life and really focus on student excellence. And right now, I've seen the board members talk about the fact that they want to get them in and get them out as quick as possible. Um, and that's kind of the wrong way of looking at it. You mentioned funding and the next question addresses that. With respect to paying for the cost of educating the college's students, where do you stand regarding tuition increases versus mill levy increases, and what's the appropriate way to balance those interests? Yeah, so right now, it, it's, it's not about how much money is in that college. We have plenty of money. We're spending just as much per student per credit hour as they are at KU and K-State. You're looking over $300 per credit hour, and we don't have the hoopla. We don't have the football programs. We don't have any of those stuff going on. Um, over 10 years ago, you still have to brag about that, the fact that a cost that they were spending per student per credit hour was unbelievable. And I will say it gives you one of the best educations you can find anywhere in, in America, especially what you're paying per cost. Um, and we got to get back to that model because we were there. We had it, and we've lost it, and we got to get back to it. I am absolutely opposed to raising tuition. Um, when I went there 20-some years ago, it was like four to $3 credit hour. Now we're at 94 um, and we don't need to be there. The other thing is the mill levy keeps going up. They may not necessarily increase the mill levy itself, but they're still increasing the taxes. Um, they're, they're, they're not being revenue neutral. And so again, that's why they're up to 45% during the time when they're losing 24% of their students. It's completely unhealthy, and we can get this thing figured out and get it back to where it needs to be. And turning the focus to jobs, you, you know as well as we all do that Kansas is experiencing <coughs> low unemployment rates. Employers are struggling to find qualified workers, especially in skilled and technical trades. Yeah. What role should the community college play in regard to workforce development? Yeah, it should be huge. So I don't think the, my experience at the college when I was there 20 years ago, they did a great job with um, helping you find the right classes you needed. They did a great job of helping you get enrolled in the short amount of time. They did a great job of helping you make sure your, your, your classes would transfer. One of the things they did lack on was figuring out how to help you find a career path after you graduated or even while you're in school. There are plenty of career paths that you can do without even graduating. Um, I've talked to local businesses around here. Um, I know they're struggling. There's one's a diesel. There's I know there's a company, a couple companies looking for diesel mechanics. Um, they're talking about paying people, you know, sixty to hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, they don't need a they don't need a bachelor's degree to do that. And we need to make sure we also a great great place to go when people are down in the economy. They can actually go there and tune up their skills and go find a new career, or even just go in there and and tune up their their skills anything they want to. Um, one of the worst stats that I've seen about JUCO is people that go there after they attend classes here do not decide to live in Johns County. And the ones that state they're going to another university, it's a little different, but quite often they state that they can't afford to live in Johns County with what they're making when they leave Johns County. And it's not because there's not a job available, it's because they're not, they don't get the right skills and they're not put with the right people to find those jobs. 
and that's an easy fix once you start once you start getting the community involvement into the school. What do you see as the key aspect of the community college's coordination with our area high schools, universities, and other post-secondary educational institutions? So they're, they're doing a good job of that overall. Um, they're partnering with these schools. I love the fact that people can get their, get some credits um, before they actually leave high school. Gives them a great head start and jump um, into their education. But we, could, we still can do better. We can have better involvement. Um, a lot of these ones are not actually given through college professors, but they're actually done with their AP courses and getting credits by just paying the money. Um, I would like to see them actually get the college experience somewhat um, and actually figure out how to get um, the, the professors into the high school or the, the students onto campus. Um, one of the things that they struggle with at JUCO is people enroll in the class, they start a class, they don't finish that class, they don't stick around, and because they don't necessarily feel comfortable on that, on that campus yet, if you're in high school and you're able to attend one class um, on that campus, it's a way for them to capture those students. Um, and again, I believe in our, our teachers up there, that for the most part, they are some of the absolute best teachers you can find um, teaching at universities. And once they experience that and they get through that class, they're more likely to come there um, and get the full experience of Johnson County. A broader look at things, what's your vision for the college 10 years from now? Yeah, so I want to make sure we get our enrollment back up where it needs to be. Um, I want to make sure that we are actually promoting student excellence, not just churning them through the process. And um, I want to see more involvement with our local businesses in particular. Um, I know there's an engineering programs that we've talked to that are, are looking for help. Um, and figuring how to figure out how to make these, pro the railroad, the BNSF Railroad, has done a really nice job of working with Johnson County. And that program is very highly successful. People can go in there. Um, and actually get a great paying job. And that's a great model. We should try to do that with more of these companies around here. And so you don't necessarily just have to be all done through, let's say, you know, Burns McDonald, but you could figure out to get a few of them together working through this, um, get some better internships through the school, and hopefully people come straight out of there and, and make some good money. And, and lastly, um, why do you believe you're uniquely qualified to serve on the JCCC board? And, and why are you seeking this office again? So I would say um, with that in particular is the fact that I'm a graduate from Johns County. Um, when I left high school, I'm um, trying to decide what I was going to do next in my life. Um, actually, my grandma would talk about the school all the time and absolutely love the school and push it into me all the time. And at the time, I said, I'm going to KU because I love KU basketball. But when I left high school, my options were pretty much going to the military or join, go to Johns County Community College. And I, ma I made that call to go to Johns County Community College, and I think it was the right one for me in particular. I don't know where I'd be without that school. Um, it took me seven years to graduate went from graduating high school to I graduated with my bachelor's from Emporia State, and Johnson County was a big part of it, and I don't know where I'd be without it. And I worked full time through my time at JUCO and Emporia State, and trying to balance that. So some semesters I'd take a semester off, and sometimes I'd take a half semester, sometimes I'd take a full semester, depending on what my work looked like and my finances at the time. Um, but that experience gives you the traditional experience. It also gave me a little bit of the non-traditional experience at JUCO. And I think that was something we really need. Um, we have some good trustees now. Um, we have some good ones running. Um, but they don't really necessarily have that full Johnson County experience. And I've seen ones that came through as teachers, which is a great experience too. But we're lacking the actual student understanding of what it's like seeing that through from beginning to end. Well, Mark, I appreciate you spending some time with us today. And before we close, I want to give you a chance to provide any final thoughts if you'd like to. <clears throat> Well, I'll say um, vote for Mark Hamill. Um, I'm also a big fan of, of uh, Jerry Molnar. I would say we're the two conservative picks for that choice. And uh, thank you for your time. Well, thank you. And let me just remind everyone that advanced voting by mail begins on Wednesday, October 13th. Advanced voting in person begins on Saturday, October 23rd. And, of course, Election Day is Tuesday, November 2nd.